Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, let's say that you've decided to look at the currencies. And your thought is, I think there's going to be a lot of movement in the, in the, in the currency, either in the, the yen, the euro, the pound, uh, Canadian dollar. But I'm not sure where the movement's going to go. I don't know if it's going to go higher. I don't know if it's going to go lower. But I just know over the course of the next month, two months, or six months that that thing's going to move a lot. Well, the two strategies with which you can think of, if that is, is your sentiment on it, and there's more than these two strategies, but the two basic ones to think of are that of a straddle and a strangle. By definition, a straddle involves buying an at-the-money call option and an at-the-money put option in the same underlying with the same expiration month. So with that, let's say that you have this at-the-money call and at-the-money put. If the stock goes, or in this case the currency goes, extremely higher, you'll make money on the call option. Now remember, you do lose money on the put option, but what you're hoping is that you get so much movement that the big gain from the call option mitigates the loss from the put option. You're looking for a lot of movement when you're using a straddle. Now, one of the reasons that you would want to consider a straddle, you don't need to pick a direction. You just need a lot of movement. Now, with that being said, we're in neutral world right now, folks. Uh, if, if you're just a stock trader or you, you've been bullish or bearish on, on stock trades, but you're using options as your instrument of trading, it's a different world that we're in right now for this presentation, that is. I know it's a different world that we're in for the market itself, too, but for this presentation, we're in a different world. If you're bullish, meaning you buy the stock, or you buy a call option, or you buy a call spread, or whatever strategy you'd like to do, the bears are your enemy. If the stock goes down, that's your enemy. Whereas with the straddle, the bulls are your friend, and the bears are your friend also. If you're long a straddle, though, your enemy is the non-movement. Just like bull is the enemy of bear, in this case, non-movement is the enemy of movement. So you're on the side of the movers right now. You want movement. You want action. You want to see this thing move a lot. And if it doesn't move, that's your enemy. Now, a straddle's bad because you've got to pay twice as much premium. And you have way more premium risk than simply buying a call or buying a put. One thing that a lot of people think when they buy a put option to protect their stock is that they're getting rid of risk. I don't think of it that way. And this is just me personally. I think of it as shifting risk. Yes, you're getting rid of the stock price risk, because if the stock were to go to zero, theoretically, uh, you have protection from the strike price of that put on down to zero. However, you're shifting yourself to premium risk. If that stock stays the same or goes up, that premium's wasted money. Now, I'm not against protecting yourself by any means, and I hope I don't come across that way. But you do need to really have a mentality that, yeah, you're, you're taking on that premium risk, so understand that that's there. So, with the straddle being bad, normally, let's say that at the money, the call option would cost you $100. Now, you're going to have to pay $200 for a call option and a put option. Now, what I want to do right now is bring up the Options Express site and show you an example of a straddle on our website. Okay, everyone should be seeing the Options Express website. Now, as we're looking at this, just so you know, these are all demonstration accounts. Let's actually expand this. So if you see any positions in here, please disregard them. They're not intended to be uh, you, you probably won't see any positions in here, just in case I click on the wrong thing. It's not intended to be a recommendation by any means. Now, what we did is I typed in CDD, 
and I got and I got an option chain. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at the Canadian loonie. Let's actually bring up CDD. We'll click Find Chain, and let's say that we want to. Right now, CDD is trading at 123.77. Now that's the dollar-based currency. That means that the dollar. For every dollar that a Canadian would want to buy, it would cost them $1.23 in Canadian loonies. So the dollar is stronger than the Canadian loonie right now. Let's scroll down and let's say that we want to buy the 123.50 call option. I click on it, the symbol is populated for me. And let's go ahead and buy 10 call options. Next, we're going to buy 10 put options. I click Find Chain again, it's going to automatically default me to this same CDD chain. Scrolling downward, we're going to buy the 123.50s. I can click on the bid or the offer price, it makes no difference. And the symbol's populated for me. We're going to buy 10 contracts here as well. We'll leave this in as a theoretical market order. We click Calculate. Now what we're seeing right here is a risk reward graph of a straddle on the Canadian loonie. So if CDD increases, you can see how we make money on the trade. If CDD decreases, you can see how we make money on the trade. You can make money if the market's going up or if the market's going down. However, and this is the however that most beginning straddle traders neglect to remember, if it stays between 118.86 and 128.14, you will not make any money. And if it stays at 123.50, you'll lose your entire investment. Now in this trade, we just entered it and we used 10 contracts each for sake of example. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, that's fine. You can do just one contract each and then if that were the case, your risk would be $460. Now to give you an idea of this, you can see here that we have $2,600 at risk on the call, $2,040 at risk on the put. If we were to just buy the call, you can see that that's $2,000 of risk that we did not have to take. So understand that with a straddle, you are taking on more premium risk. Now, to make this fair, on this you can see that our expiration date is in May. Let's say that we wanted to see what this was on April 31st. I'm sorry, April 30th. April 31st, that's an interesting day. We click Draw Chart. And now when we do this, we're going to see what the risk reward would be at that point in time. Now at expiration, if it's at 123.50, we lose everything. But on April 30th, we're only down about $1,700 because there's more time premium left in it. So with that, you can kind of see and get a feel for it even before expiration. Let's go back to our presentation. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.